Spiritual ecology is a field that is emerging largely through three disparate streams, science and academia, religion and spirituality, and ecological sustainability. It is joining ecology and environmentalism with the awareness of the sacred within creation. Apart from the glaringly obvious, its age, the differences in animism are subtle yet deep. The sacred within creation is a knowledge rather than an awareness. You know the sacred within creation because animism is experiential and you have met it. And having met the sacred, you love it. This leads not only to an awareness of the need for ecology and environmentalism, but to behaviours that honour the sacred. You take care of that which you love. We will put a card on the end of this video, linking to our video, What is Animism? for those that want to know more. Links to other references will pop in the video description. Mother Earth is a living ecosystem. And like all ecosystems, every part is interconnected and interdependent. This is a central tenet of both animism and spiritual ecology. Sustainability has to mean the sustainability of the whole system. Spiritual ecology is not based upon any single religion or spiritual path, rather the primary recognition of the sacred nature of all of creation. This is also the core of animism. We live in a world where there is a growing predominance toward a global mechanised world view with an insatiable drive for scientific progress and material prosperity without any sense of limits or responsibility. Any collective sense of the sacred has been severed. A critical shift in human understanding occurred at the beginning of the 16th century with the scientific revolution. This carried on throughout the age of reason, also called the Enlightenment, and then the Industrial Revolution. There was a radical expansion of collective consciousness into the era of rational science, which saw nature as a utilitarian means to an end. At the same time, we move from being a largely agricultural society with the old ways of relating to seasons and cycles to an industrial society, which caused a collective change away from experiencing nature as a living spiritual presence. This shift of both experience and understanding had reverberating effects on the environment. After trying to wipe out our own indigenous animistic ecology, but not quite managing it, as outlined, the Western colonialist values went on to attempt to wipe out indigenous spiritual ecology worldwide. Western beliefs that land and the environment are commodities to be used and exploited were imposed through colonisation upon indigenous spiritual ecologies resulting in the loss of the sacred nature of creation with its devastating consequences. Spiritual ecology is a response to the values and socio-political structures of recent centuries with their mechanised world view that sees nature as a utilitarian means to an end, something that is there purely for the benefit of mankind and for our taking a paradigm that is causing environmental issues such as depletion of species, soil degradation, climate crisis and overconsumption. Spiritual dynamics have always been at the root of animism and spiritual ecology recognises that it is the lack of spiritual dynamics that is at the root of environmental degradation that needs addressing. There has been a developing spiritual vision of a collective human earth divine evolution that is expanding consciousness beyond the dualities of human and earth, heaven and earth and mind and body for some time. This recognises the unity and interrelationship, 
the interconnectedness of all of creation. In another word, animism. The trajectory needs to swing back to an intimacy with the earth and its sacred essence. In the words of Gus Speth, we need a cultural and spiritual transformation. Ecological renewal and sustainability depends upon spiritual awareness and an attitude of responsibility that puts the earth as the central spiritual context. There are many visionaries who promote this thread, but where religious transcendental beliefs are involved, it is counter-intuitive. The transcendental view that deity or the sacred is out there and is separate from life on earth is the very dualism that caused the problem in the first place. Having spent the best part of nearly 500 years trying to eradicate the sacred nature and the interconnectedness of all of creation, there is now a much needed growing awareness of the wisdom and the knowing of indigenous ways, which are nearly always animistic. The earth is the central spiritual context and the relationship with environment is intimate. Indigenous is that which is native, original and resident to a place. It reflects an attitude and way of being in the world that is rooted in land and embedded in place. Every act in life is a symbiotic relationship with an animate nature. The awareness may be growing, but it is still not nearly as widely accepted as it needs to be. All environmentalists, ecologists and academics need to take on board a spiritual ecology which needs to be animistic. And animism needs to uphold the spiritual ecology end of its bargain. We don't have time to pussyfoot any longer. Our world is burning. It is the lack of awareness of the sacred that is at the root of our crisis. We need a transition in collective awareness towards the consciousness of the divinity within every particle of life. It is only when the sacred is recognised that environmental action will have any real effect and cause real change and transformation. And that is our responsibility.